is the part that I wanted to discuss more. The contribution part, the similarities part, and the differences part. Now, if you can recall, we had a discussion on the contribution part. For example, we talk about Syadvad, we talk of, talked about Anekantvad. These are the two things that we, that we discussed in detail yesterday. So that's one of the important contributions of Jainism. Let's talk about its similarities with especially Buddhism. Hmm? They both inspired the philosophy of Upanishads. Again, the part which we already discussed, how Upanishads are against rituals, huh? how Upanishads actually promote meditation, how Upanishads talk about philosophy, not exactly the ritual part. That is why the, the school of thought in Upanishads and Aranyak is totally different from that of Brahmans. Hmm? Theravad actually uh, is, is, is the Charuthi uh, Divya. Theravad is exactly the more orthodox part of Buddhism. Theravad, school of elders, maybe you, are, you, you got confused over there, school of elders, but that's a part of Buddhism. Over here, Divya, we are talking about overall Buddhism. Overall Buddhism, okay? You, you remember in uh, Upanishads, we talked about it, that the ultimate goal of life is salvation. This salvation is nothing but what? Nirvana. Right? Anyways, both the sections appeal to the socially downtrodden people. So this is an important part. The people who were put at the bottom rung of the society, especially in the later Vedic period, because of various rituals, because of the mindset of the people, because of the overall rigidity which had crept in Hinduism, which had crept in the society at that time. So both Buddhism and Jainism provided the people who were considered low at that time a proper place in the society. They were given equal importance. They were given equal status by these two religions. So definitely, the, this would be a similarity between the two religions, right? Both believed in Nirvana salvation. That would be liberating from the eternal chain of life and death, your yeah, birth and death, that part, the state of Nirvana, okay? Both emphasize strong moral principles rather than the practice of ritualism. This again can be sourced to Upanishads. Okay, now let's see the differences part, important part. Because I'll show you the types of questions that have been framed from Buddhism and Jainism. You will see this particular part being one of the most important ones. Jainism recognized the existence of God. Whereas if I can recall, Gautam Buddha was agnostic. He did not answer about the existence of God directly. Huh, yeah, absolutely. Both of them were started by Kshatriyas. This again is a, is a similarity as a reaction against the domination of Brahmins, you can say. Huh? Niharika. Anyways, Jainism believes in transmigration of soul. Whereas if I can recall Buddhism, Gautam Buddha said soul is a myth. He was more into practical issues, not exactly talking about what will happen when, once, when one dies. So he did not talk about that that much. Buddhism talk, talks about middle path. Na luxury ho, na austerity ho. The madhya maag, the middle path. On the other hand, Jainism talks about austerity, penance. The biggest difference between the two. Okay. Then in Jainism, everything in nature, every living and non-living has a soul of its own. That's why we said extreme form of ahimsa, extreme form, form of non-violence. Buddhism doesn't believe so. Buddhism may, soul is considered to be a myth. Huh? While Buddhism doesn't discriminate between males and females, according to Jain, women and men householders cannot attain salvation. This again is an important part that we discussed yesterday, right? Ki, there is a lot of you know discrimination, especially in the clergy part, when it comes to Jainism. In Buddhism, as such, there is no discrimination. Although, as we discussed, Gautam Buddha himself was a bit skeptical initially when it came to admission of women in Sangha making women a part of sun. He was initially skeptical, then it was sorted out and the rest is history as they say. The concept of ahimsa different in Buddhism. Now this part actually 
seems to be there is some confusion a lot of scholars believe now just go through this point first the concept of ahimsa is different in buddhism as it permitted the eating of animal flesh where it is your necessity or traditional diet of the people guys people believe that gautam buddha died when he ate now this please focus over here gautam buddha died you remember he died at the age of 80 that means in 483 bce hmm? so there is a thought process which says yeah at pav at pava gautam buddha are you sure man <laughs> uh so there is a thought process in buddhism that gautam buddha actually died when he ate meat ya flesh focus focus man of pig which was served to him right so this this is one of the parts which is actually referred to in certain non canonical buddhist text non canonical please focus not exactly to canonical non canonical that means the later editions yeah because that meat was still so he uh, fell ill and he died after that that's that's one of the parts but if you go through the canonical buddhist texts guys this confusion seems to be cleared it clearly says that the meal that was served to buddh was actually the meal that is served to the animals now if i can recall correctly please don't forget gautam buddh used to move from one place to the other meeting all the sections of the society okay he was very open to all the sections of the society whether you consider them as low or high or whatever in one such instance as he was visiting a home of a person he was actually served the food which at that time was to be served to a pig also yeah which is which is a common meal for a pig this part is what we refer to as some sort of a mushroom so the reference over there in canonical buddhism is to a mushroom which is eaten by a pig but that mushroom is poisonous to humans or not fit for human consumption i hope you know this thing that out of so many mushrooms which are found in forests very few are fit to be consumed by humans quite a lot of mushrooms are poisonous in nature okay just check this out it's it's all spread on internet you can check this out there is a very selected set of mushrooms which can be consumed by humans otherwise others are poisonous so what gautam buddh ate at that time was exactly a mushroom not exactly pig meat but a type of food which pigs could eat at that time so there is the difference between pig meal and meal of pig okay so but it is it is obviously there in the society that certain people believed that uh, gautam buddh promoted eating non vegetarian food or having this particular part so that's that's one of the things consuming consuming animal flesh part it's a bit debatable i don't think any examining body would be asking many questions from this but in case you are writing this down in the mains exam in case you want to write this please use this word please use this word so that the evaluator uh, rakesh you see uh, when it comes to buddhism you you remember i had a discussion that buddhism actually spread so much in different areas around india and different countries around india rakesh that the cultural influence of those countries could be seen in modern day hinduism i told you you check out any country of southeast asia major chunk of china major chunk of japan they are followers of buddhism so they have their own way of taking buddhism yeah they have their own way of following buddhism so that particular part is what i am talking about over here right yeah yeah, yeah they actually consume pork thinking that gautam buddh used to consume it at his time so that is what i just discussed with everyone okay guys all clear on this particular part okay so what's remaining in this check out the mains questions that just check out